My name is Matt Maxwell, and I'm the product manager for the Tektronix Real-Time Signal Analyzers. And today, we'll be looking at a side-by-side -side comparison of the Agilent PXA with its real-time spectrum analyzer capabilities, this just started shipping, against the Tektronix RSA 5000. We'll be looking specifically at the Tektronix RSA's image-free architecture. And what that means is the Tektronix analyzer always has pre-selectors or bandpass filters that serve to reject images regardless of the bandwidth, the mode of operation, or the frequency range to which it's tuned. Agilent doesn't have the same architecture. With the Agilent PXA, the pre-selector filter, the GIG pre-selector filter, is bypassed whenever you use the real-time spectrum analyzer option. What this means is that when you're doing things like spectrum management or any other over-the-air monitoring kinds of application with the Agilent PXA, if you're looking at any signals above 3.6 gigahertz, it's impossible to discern if they are images of, of other signals created inside the instrument or if they actually are present. This can also be a problem with the Agilent PXA looking at low-level spurious signals with the real-time spectrum analyzer mode, again, because it's not possible to discern real signals from image signals. We're talking here about microwave pre-selection. And pre-selection is the process of selecting a signal window where you want to observe the signal of interest. There are actually multiple signal windows present in a spectrum analyzer without the use of pre-selection. Pre-selection serves the purpose of closing all the spectral windows except for the desired one so you can easily see the signal of interest. We are showing now an Agilent PXA with the real-time capability enabled. It's being driven by a microwave signal generator to produce a 12 gigahertz CW signal. You'll notice as I adjust the frequency of the microwave signal generator and adjust the marker peak, I'm accurately measuring the signal as it changes frequency. Now I will tune this instrument to an image frequency. Of course, it has to perform a, an alignment to maintain the performance published in the data sheet. I do another marker search, and I see an image of the signal at 11.4 gigahertz. Again, as I vary the frequency upwards to 12.01 gigahertz, you'll, and then to 12.02 gigahertz, I see the image frequency actually shows up at 11.38 gigahertz. The point here is I'm looking at an image of the 12 gigahertz signal that's being produced inside the PXA. The reason for this is that whenever I'm using the real-time mode, the PXA's pre-selector is necessarily bypassed because it doesn't allow for wider bandwidths than about 40 megahertz or so. But in all cases, regardless of the real-time bandwidth used, the pre-selector is bypassed producing this effect where if I were monitoring signals over the air or if I were looking for low-level spurious signals, I would not be able to discern image frequencies from real signals that are actually present. Now I'm looking at the same 12 gigahertz signal on the Tektronix RSA 5126A real-time signal analyzer. And again, as I adjust the frequency of the microwave signal analyzer upwards or downwards, I can see the signal update on the screen live. Now to demonstrate the fact that we have an image-free architecture on the Tektronix RSA. Well, I don't have the same image frequencies to tune to where I can show problems with the analyzer. What I can show is a one gigahertz span. Now with a one gigahertz span, I'm still using the DPX real-time live update display where I can see the live RF of this measurement. And you'll notice there are no spurs to be seen. I have full control of the resolution bandwidth so I can lower the resolution bandwidth to try to see lower into the noise and then I can adjust the reference level trying to see signals that are maybe further down and you can see there are no image frequencies present across this one gigahertz frequency range. And just to show, I can still adjust the signal generator level and adjust, update the frequency. So I'm still looking at a live signal and 
again, with the Tektronix RSA, because I have an image-free architecture, I don't have the same problems monitoring signals over the air or looking for low-level spurious signals that I would have on the Agilent PXA. So we've seen the two different approaches for the use or the implementation of microwave preselection. With the Agilent PXA, a YIG preselector is used. This is a traditional approach. There are a lot of advantages to using this approach. However, the big disadvantage is for wideband acquisitions, the preselector cannot be used due to the nonlinear nature of YIG preselectors, especially for wider bandwidths, wider than about 40 megahertz. The Tektronix RSA uses a switched filter preselector, which gives better capabilities when performing wideband analysis because there's no longer a concern about seeing image frequencies or image signals that aren't really present that are actually created inside the analyzer, like the PXA does. With the RSA, you have a uh, stable frequency or amplitude and phase response and better local oscillator isolation, and they're also always on, no matter the mode of operation. So Tektronix has an image-free architecture at all frequencies, all bandwidths, and all modes of operation. Compared to the Agilent PXA with its RTSA option, there are images above 3.6 gigahertz, and we've looked at one example. We can say that Tektronix RSA is better suited to performing either over-the-air measurements or for looking at low-level spurious signals. I thank you for your time.